Okay, so here we go. We've got uh, just a, an assortment of uh, lawnmowers out here. Let me try to zoom this out. There we go. Okay, so I've got the, <clears throat> this is just small engine to give an example of like where to find the air cleaner. So um, <clears throat> on here, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, what you wanna look for, uh, your motor's not starting. Uh, you got three basic things and that is uh, spark, is it getting spark to the spark plug? And your spark plugs are here on the end of the motor, usually someplace like here. Just follow the wire in on this one here. That's what your spark plug looks like right there. That's where the fire is, fires up. And on these motors, it's on here. Okay, so that spark, all right? Is it getting spark to that spark plug? Then the next thing is it getting fuel. And fuel comes into the engine through the carburetor so it starts with air coming into the intake so if you find the carburetor okay there's a carburetor and if you see the exhaust like the exhaust pipe on the other side of the motor usually is the where the carburetor is on here you can't really see it because it's covered with the air cleaner but wherever you see the air cleaner wherever you put the air cleaner behind that is the carburetor so anytime the carburetor is not doing its job see on this engine here's the air cleaner okay and behind that is the carburetor and the carburetor's job is to mix the air from the air filter in the case of this old briggs and stratton motor here's the air filter and then below it below it is the carburetor so this is like a downdraft carburetor right and <clears throat> so anyway that's air that's where the air comes in so then compression so what you uh need for combustion is compression the air fuel mixture the proper air fuel mixture and then compression so with compression, unless you have a, actually to properly do it, you would need this thing called a, like a leak down tester. It's where you uh, take the spark plug out and then you go ahead and plug it with a, this hose and you pump air into it and then you lock that air into it and then there's an allowable, once you get it up to a certain PSI level, there's a certain... Uh, level psi that it's allowed to drop to be considered um still a serviceable engine so i was going to take one of these uh <clears throat> starting with kind of the troubleshooting now so you know the three things you need the air and fuel mixture or is it getting fuel is it getting spark is it getting compression now that you know these things that are really important to have and are the basic big three issues um, that you're going to be facing. Th these are the things you got to check. So how do you check them? All right, so let's start off. We start off with the fuel. Is it getting fuel? Well, before it gets to the carburetor, it has to be in the gas tank. So you want to check and make sure you got gas. Always make sure you got gas. All right, you, everybody knows where to put their gas in. Now, uh, on these float bowl type carburetors, um here's where the gas comes into the carburetor from the uh there's fuel line over here coming from the fuel tank all right and then it gets down in here sometimes you can just this on this metal float ball here you can just maybe tap it a few times but it's hard to tell uh if that is actually going to fix things but that's something you can try okay and so, like, this has a float bowl on the carburetor. This, uh, this one over here does. And you can see that right there. That's the float bowl. Sometimes you can just take a screwdriver or a wrench and tap on that a few times to loosen the needle. Uh, this type of carburetor right here, yep, there's a float bowl right there. This one right here, this type of lawnmower does not have a float bowl. Okay, this is, like, has a diaphragm action uh, that actually uh, pumps the fuel up into there and it has a, uh, a a tube that comes down out of the carburetor into the tank and it 
the uh, fuel gets sucked up into the tube and the depending on the health of this diaphragm that's pressed in between the carburetor and the gas tank body of the gas tank there's a diaphragm like uh, gasket type thing and it just fluctuates when the pistons going you know back and forth that pressure causes the diaphragm to fluctuate back and forth to kind of flutter and that fluttering action of the diaphragm draws fuel out of the fuel tank and into the engine carburetor into the carburetor for proper mixing with the air that's being drawn in so how do you check that well on the uh on these it kind of requires you know if you suspect that it could be a fuel issue you know if you're pulling it and pulling it any of these lawnmowers or any of this equipment you keep pulling it what you can do is take out the the spark plug after you've pulled it maybe 20 times it still doesn't start take out the spark plug see if it has any fuel at all on it all right that would be if it's totally covered with fuel but it's not firing up that means you are at least getting fuel that's one way to tell okay that's one way to check okay is then uh that means fuel is getting to the combustion chamber through the carburetor the carburetor is delivering fuel to the combustion chamber because the spark plug was all wet when you pulled it out but in some cases the spark plug will not will be completely dry after like i said after you pull it about 20 times the spark plug's completely dry and then you suspect okay you know you got gas in it right so from the gas tank it's not getting to the combustion chamber so the issue then is somewhere in this carburetor all right and also if it's got way too much gas on it the spark plug it may be flooding out we'll get to that in a second but in the case of where the spark plug is like totally dry then this carburetor probably diaphragm has gone bad and on these older diaphragm you know the older these things get i mean it just naturally it's going to uh deteriorate the flexibility of that diaphragm is going to go away it's going to be really hard brittle and it's just not going to work for the to uh pump that uh, fuel and draw it out from the tank so if the spark plugs dry suspect that it's not getting fuel from the gas tank as long as you got gas in there it's not getting through the carburetor to the combustion chamber okay that's if the plug is dry now if the plug is all wet okay it could follow it out and that may be causing the engine not to run so here's another thing once you take this air cleaner off of this motor look at this this is a sponge type material sometimes this gets totally saturated with oil debris gets sucked up into here and it just gets totally clogged and it basically chokes air off and it but it does allow fuel to be just basically dumped into the combustion chamber which fouls the plug and it won't allow it to run okay so that is basically basically covering uh fuel delivery to the combustion chamber but in the case of these float bowls uh, that have a fuel delivery line going to from the gas tank here to it plugs into the carburetor right right here you can kind of see where it plugs in what you can do is take that line off pull it off and see if gas starts flowing out then you know you're you got gas coming from the tank at least to the end of the line here and then you so you know you have that going for you and then also what you can do usually on the bottom of these if you can see it right here there is a uh, float bowl plug all right and a lot of these meter and this one right here actually meters the uh this is the main rpm uh, mixture adjustment it's a mixture adjustment on the main jet here this goes up into the main jet it's a needle but this big nut right here basically pulls this whole thing out and you can do that just grab a wrench that fits looks like about a half an inch pull that out and see if you just kind of got a constant flow of fuel you should because that allows <clears throat> the as the fuel level goes down without this float bowl so you take that nut out and the fuel should be dumping out it should be dumping out all right and uh, if it's not 
pumping out when you know you have fuel coming from the fuel tank through the line to the carburetor and you, you remove this plug out and you don't have any fuel flowing through there that means that there's the there's a needle in here that's stuck the needle that basically plugs the uh, gas off from being delivered from the gas tank to the carburetor okay so that needle it's called a needle and seat and uh, it's float activated as the uh, fuel in the float bowl rises on these float bowls as the fuel rises there's a float in there that comes up and the needle that sits on top of it comes up and plugs a hole so it stops fuel flow so as this thing's running i mean it, there's constantly fuel just trickling into the carburetor to keep it going and the float uh maintains a constant level of uh, fuel in there it's supposed to if, it's, if everything's working right so that is fuel delivery all right we checked for a uh, dirty air cleaner okay right on here on this lawnmower to get to the air cleaner it's a regular screwdriver to pull this out and here's these are very common air cleaners that goes in here the uh, plastic part when you put it back in goes toward the engine side this air cleaner also fits on this lawnmower like i said it's very common you just take this down it goes right in there okay so you want to check these also because if this gets totally blocked with uh, debris and stuff it'll completely um almost completely block the air which will give a really rich send excessive uh fuel delivery to the combustion chamber and foul out your spark plug and it won't run like that all right so we talked about uh the three things, the fuel, spark, compression, and mentioned a little bit about fuel delivery, and then also checking the air cleaner. Uh, do you have fuel in it? Is it getting to the carburetor? If it's getting to the carburetor, is it filling up the float bowl in the case of float bowl engines or carburetors that have floats on them? And then uh, spark. Okay, so for spark, we can just go ahead. There's the spark plug. I showed all these spark plugs earlier. And what you can do, there's actually a spark tester. And let me see if I got a thing laying around here. This sucks. I had some plugs laying around here just going into my shop. You'll see all my mess. Yes. Okay, going back out, you want to grab a plug. I'm not going to take it out, actually, but um, what you can do to see if you're getting spark here, if you see that little gap right there, see if this thing will adjust. How good is this camera? That gap right there at the tip of my finger should have a blue spark in it when this engine's running, and it just keeps sparking and sparking and sparking as long as the engine's running. So what you want to do is get an assistant to help you out, pull the pull the string cord. Now, you got to be very careful with this and do not hold this with your fingers, your bare fingers like this or you are risking being shocked a little bit, okay? Probably won't get shocked, but um, use a, a pair of pliers with an insulated handle, okay? So as you you take out your spark plug, you plug it in like this. This is just an extra one I had laying around. And then you set it. You, know, you want to plug it in so it's got a good connection right here at the elbow. So it's plugged into the wire. Then you want to rest it against the engine block and have an assistant go ahead and uh, try to start the uh, mower. Okay, And it'll pull real easy now because this plug will be out. You'll have it here resting against. So there will be no resistance to the compression. There will be no compression. So it'll pull real easy, and then you want to look as it's being pulled. Uh, best to have this in a, be in a shadowy area or inside of the garage with uh, the lights dim to be able to see this spark. And it'll, sometimes you can even hear it, and it'll spark. So that just lets you know, you know, whether or not it's uh, it's sparking. 
So that's that pretty much works for all engines, but you kind of need an assistant to be able to do that. If you're really talented, you can uh, do it on your own, but you got to get a little creative. Okay, so that's checking for spark. I'm not going to go into all the reasons why a big one for spark to be off, though. I mean, a plug could go bad, a spark plug, but I really haven't seen a lot of spark plugs go bad, uh, honestly. Uh, if you keep them clean, keep a good gap on them, and make sure they're not getting a bunch of uh, carbon deposits or oil deposits. If you've got a lot of carbon or a lot of oil deposits on a spark plug, you know, you're talking about you have some other issues with carburation or oil consumption. Maybe rings are going bad and uh, oil is getting past the piston rings up into the combustion chamber and creating deposits on the spark plug that's in there. So um, that's that for uh, spark. That's how you check spark. And if a lot of times, okay, if the plug is not firing, okay, it could be something in this uh, with the safety lever here when you pull this okay that basically makes the ignition a circuit and it allows the magneto and uh, to do what it does on the engine there to uh, create spark at the spark plug uh, if there is a wire broken that uh, is not allowing for grounding or it is going to ground all the time that's a possibility okay could could be as simple as loose wire that's up in there and that's would have to be something you have to uh, look into a little deeper and find out where that wire is uh, on your engine which would require more maintenance probably more than you are looking to do okay so that could be a, a reason for lack of spark another thing uh, for the the lack of spark um, could be that you know if you hit something and had no a, had a real sudden stoppage like you you ran over a big log or a, a big big brick or something you just didn't see in some tall grass and the engine just boom it stops and it's like uh oh you know, a lot of most people know that feeling and you might have broke something. Most of the times they start back up, but sometimes they won't. And if they won't, um, what happens is there is a, a flywheel key that basically keeps the timing of the ignition uh, properly uh, set. Okay, if that key gets sheared, there's a flywheel that sits on top of the crankshaft. And when you put that flywheel and assemble it on top of the crankshaft, there's a key keyway in there and if you hit something real hard and it stops well that that heavy flywheel wants to keep going and it may shear that key that uh enough that now the magnets that are on the side of the of the flywheel as they're passing past the magneto that's on the engine um it doesn't create spark properly or at the right time and so that's something that is uh, pretty common when people hit stuff and hopefully you didn't break anything you know when you hit something like a push rod or you know something up inside of your engine um, but anyway so we talked about fuel delivery we talked about spark and then compression uh, with compression I'm gonna see if I if this spark plug might be loose here that I can just pull it out by hand uh, no luck but uh, I know I just put this one in recently, and so none of these are loose right now. But what you want to do with compression is grab a pair of pliers and make sure when you're, when you're using pliers, preferably use the proper deep well socket. And I think this is like about a 15 sixteenths, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, or a 7 eighths. I'm not sure. But it's a deep well socket that goes around there. Use a proper tool and a wrench to get it out if you do only have like channel lock pliers or a pair of pliers, make sure to grab around this big nut area. Grab around that, then twist it loose. And once it's totally out, there's just gonna be a hole, uh, an exposed hole. And what you wanna do is put your thumb over that hole. Don't put your finger down in there, put it over there so it's resting flat against that hole and you make a seal. And then you have somebody go up there and try to pull start the engine for you. And what you want to feel is 
a pushback on your thumb, and it'll sound like pss, 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 pss. that air will try to blow past. It will blow past your thumb if you have compression. Okay, if you're not feeling anything or very little, there's a chance that uh, you might have some serious engine problems or a valve stuck, something like that. Um, it could be as simple as see, this is like a flathead engine, so the head's flat. Um, now this one over here, this Honda, they've got a different valve arrangement over the, uh, on the top of the engine there. So this has got like overhead valves on it. And sometimes, um, if this cover, if somebody, you know, bumps into something in the garage with this cover and it dents it, it'll keep those, uh, valve rocker arms from, you know, pushing the valve all the way to up and down won't allow proper travel of the valve for it to open and close and allow the engine to run properly so that's some something also that if this cover gets dinged up and bent um, that could uh, mess with the uh, valve functions inside the engine so if you don't have compression you know you probably have some kind of valve function mis malfunction and um, or uh, other bad things but yeah, no compression is no good. So those are the things to kind of look for. Uh, the at-home fix-it possibly things that you can do that are pretty easy. But this is uh, this is basically uh, engine um, gas engine 101 basics. You know, you got to have fuel getting to the engine. You got to have spark getting to the combustion chamber. And you have to have compression within the combustion chamber for all that to work and for everything to run fine. So um, there's a link in the description below this video, maybe, if, if you're seeing this on YouTube. And you can contact me anytime. I'm up here in uh, Florissant. And um, I've been working on lawnmowers for about 35 years. So uh, I'm pretty good. I'm on the cheap as far as like getting things fixed up if you have an issue you know bring it on by i have like a 60 dollars get it going fee and what i try to do is uh not have to go out and buy a bunch of uh a bunch of parts and stuff like that i try to make do with what i got been doing that for years on my own stuff and uh i'm like doing that on the side now to uh, help people out and uh, my thing is speed getting it back to people um you know you take it to these uh, big longmore uh, facility shops and stuff, it takes weeks, you know, sometimes over a month to get your equipment back. But some people need to cut their grass or get stuff done now. And that's what I'm here for. So if you want a quick turnaround, you know, give me a shout. Um, I, uh, the link is down in the description. Like I said, if it's a YouTube video, have a good day. Thanks.